Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Now Live at 4 on this Thursday. For more summary today. Yeah, a little. the sun came out a little bit warmer. We're starting to turn the corner a little yeah, bit. It's almost June. Yeah, you're going to go for a drive yes. today. Nice day for a little drive we in go. something... Uh, <laughs> Little little car. Harvey Briggs and I go be I go behind the wheel of Harvey Briggs in a Ford F one fifty Raptor. I've never seen anything like this. No, it's it's something. Yeah, we, I'm we, looking forward to we that. We get very muddy. Yeah. So that's coming up. But first here's what's making news on this Thursday. Video of a young girl getting hit by a foul ball prompts questions about just how safe are you at local ballparks? Our Danica Lewis looks into that. Attorney General William Barr disagrees with the special prosecutor saying Robert Mueller could have decided if if the president committed a crime. And lawmakers have come up with new ways to fight ticks in state parks. Ro Schmidt is here with that. Let's take a look outside today. The sun was sort of in and out, but mm -hmm. it was nice and warm. Yep. I wonder where this is. Let's, let's, we're going to pull out and see where this is, or nope. just a pretty reflection on the water? Well, it looks like the locks, Tenny locks, the way it looks. And we have a taste of summer, at least for one day coming up. Data's in the backyard with the good news on that. Yes, this evening not so bad, and tomorrow really looks awesome for us. Uh, really expecting a really pleasant Friday. Uh, good news on that front. Looking at our visible cloud track, we have some sunshine right now in Madison. Overall this evening, things should stay mostly quiet. There is a slight chance for an isolated shower, mainly along the state line. Not a great chance for us, though. And our Doppler track overall pretty quiet also. For much of the state, it's been a, a quiet day. Currently sitting at 76 in Madison, but we're at 81 in Mineral Point, 77 in Lone Rock and in Platteville. So we're already above average and of course warmer than where we were at this time yesterday. Our breeze coming from uh, the southeast for us for most of the area is going to stay pretty calm and variable overnight. Don't plan on much coming through, just the slight chance for an isolated shower. Temperatures will fall to the mid 50s for tomorrow and Friday. Plan on sunshine again and even milder temperatures. We'll take a closer look at what's ahead for the weekend. Just a few minutes right now on the roads. I'm not seeing any major delays. Eastbound on the Beltline, of course, going a little slower than usual. Those speeds down to about 30 miles per hour, but we are at least moving on the eastbound side. Verona looks okay at this time. McKee Road and 151 still have those delays due to some uh, construction around there. Janesville doesn't look too bad in 39 and 90. Should be pretty smooth. In fact, if you're going from Janesville to the Beltline, it'll be about 27 minutes, 15 minutes from Sox City to Middleton and from Sun Prairie to downtown. Grab the shades, you'll need them for the drive home. Right now I'm like squinting out of my left eye with the sun coming through. But we have sunshine at least for the rest of the evening. Uh, again, tomorrow, sunshine as well. For us for your Friday. All right, Dana, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Dana. First at four, it is a video that has a lot of people talking today. A four-year-old girl is still recovering down in Houston after being hit by a foul ball. We got to wondering how teams around here are protecting your family during games. Danica Lewis is here now with more on that, and that's a question a lot of people are asking today. I, I think so, because if you haven't seen this video yet, it is truly cringeworthy, especially for any parent out there. A line drive foul ball flies straight into the stands, and by some estimates it was going 90 miles an hour off the bat of Chicago Cubs outfielder Albert Almora Jr. Just hope everybody's okay. Almora is everybody's shaking. Yeah, it, it hit it hit a, ch a young child, and so Almora is really shaking up right there. And and I mean, he saw it. Just praying and and uh, yeah, I'm 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 speechless. I'm and I'm at loss of words. Being a father, two boys. So that four-year-old girl is expected to be okay, and Almora says he wants to meet her once she's out of the hospital. The Madison Mallards ballpark was actually rebuilt back in 2011, and with that came closer seating and high-grade nets that protect most of the fans sitting in the stadium's 3,000 grandstand seats. We certainly built it so fans could be close and on top of the action, but with that comes you know, less time to react to things. And so when we did that, we knew we had to put netting up. Mallard's management has actually gotten complaints from fans who frequent the duck pond, asking them to scale back the amount of netting so they can see the game better. But they say fan safety has to come first. Now, parents, the Mallard's franchise also wants to remind you to stay attentive during games and perhaps stay off your phone when the ball's in play. At Miller Park, by the way, the netting does extend just beyond the dugouts on either side of the field, something the MLB actually required every team to do last year. Safety first. Yeah. You have to, after, especially after seeing a video like that. But she's going to be okay. Yes. That's the good news. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Thanks. Thanks, sure. Thanks Danica. Danica.
President Trump says Robert Mueller's investigation cleared him of all wrongdoing, but the special counsel spoke for himself for the first time yesterday, and that drew the president's attention. Nicole Killian has more from the White House. I think Mueller is a true never-Trumper. He's somebody that dislikes Donald Trump. President Trump railed against Robert Mueller one day after the special counsel spoke about his investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election for the first time. Wednesday, Mueller made clear he didn't exonerate the president. If we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. That means you're innocent. That means you're innocent. Excuse me. Then he should have said... You're guilty. In an exclusive interview with CBS this morning, Attorney General William Barr tells Jan Crawford that he cleared President Trump of obstruction of justice charges because Mueller didn't. When he didn't make a decision, the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, and I felt it was necessary for us uh, as the heads of, uh, of the department to reach that decision. President Trump also challenged Democrats' growing calls for impeachment. He called it a filthy word and said he doesn't see how it's possible since there were no high crimes or misdemeanors. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Congress must complete its own investigations into the president before moving forward. You don't bring an impeachment unless you have all of the facts, the strongest possible case, uh, so that the, um, uh, the president is held accountable one way or another. But some Democrats say Mueller's comments open the door to impeachment. I would suggest that he told us enough to interpret what he said as a referral for impeachment proceedings. One thing Democrats do agree on, special counsel Robert Mueller should testify before Congress about his report. In Washington, Nicole Killian for News 3 Now. But Justice Department officials tell CBS News special counsel Mueller believes his report speaks for itself and there is no reason for him to testify before Congress. President Trump said he knew nothing about a plan to keep the USS John McCain out of sight during a trip to Japan over the Memorial Day weekend. CBS News confirmed an email to Navy and Air Force officials ordering the action. A tarp was placed over the ship on Friday but removed on Saturday when President Trump arrived in Japan. Somebody did it because they thought I didn't like them, okay? And they were well-meaning, I will say. I didn't know anything about it. It's impossible to go through the grief process when my father, who's been dead 10 months, is constantly in the news cycle mm -hmm. because the president is so obsessed with the fact that he's never going to be a great man like he was. A commander told the Associated Press all ships remained in normal configuration and were visible from the USS Wasp, where the president visited sailors this past weekend. The acting defense secretary has asked his chief of staff to look into the matter. Well, as you head outside this summer, state park officials want to warn you that ticks are in every part of Wisconsin. A new package of bills at the state capitol is aiming to spread awareness about the tiny insects and the Lyme disease that they could be carrying. Our Rose Schmidt is here to explain. Rose? Mark and Susan, it's not just deer and wood ticks you have to be worried about, but also Lone Star ticks in Wisconsin. Identifying and preventing them are two goals state officials have for anyone who plans on visiting state parks and forests this summer. But state lawmakers say our state is behind in taking action to address Lyme disease. In 2017, Wisconsin was the fourth worst state in the nation for the number of cases. A group of lawmakers has introduced a legislation package that would require signs to be posted and brochures offered that would inform visitors about how to check for ticks and prevent tick bites. Another bill would require DNR to sell bug spray with DEET in all state parks and forests when their offices are open. When you head out into the woods, you know, regardless of what kind of day it is or what you think it may be, spraying yourself some, with some repellent would certainly be a plus. Because, uh, and the thing is, trying to get people aware of it to get it in the early stages. State parks officials say they provide pamphlets about ticks at their properties, and they do currently sell bug spray with DEET at some of their locations. The other proposals would, would create a tick disease study committee and require a position in the state's health department be dedicated to raising awareness about diseases spread by ticks and mosquitoes. These bills were just introduced last week, and lawmakers say the package is not a cure-all solution, but they're hoping it's a start. Hopefully so. Rochebitt reporting. Thank you. The only abortion clinic in Missouri could lose its license tomorrow. Tom Hansen reports on the fight that has now headed to court. 
With the famous Gateway Arch in St. Louis as the backdrop, pro-abortion advocates demonstrated. Concerned the state's only abortion clinic could lose its license Friday. We need to make abortion access inclusive to everyone who has the capability of carrying a fetus. Planned Parenthood went to court to try to get a temporary restraining order to allow its St. Louis facility to keep providing abortions. Missouri's health department has raised concerns about patient care and legal issues at the clinic. Shame on Missouri politicians and Missouri government for weaponizing the licensing and regulatory process to end safe and legal abortion in Missouri. A St. Louis judge heard an hour of arguments Thursday morning. It's unclear when he'll make a judgment. The state's health department wants to interview a handful of physicians at the clinic. A Planned Parenthood attorney told the judge it can't force doctors to comply. The high quality health care provider that Planned Parenthood is has bent over backwards to try and comply with frankly medically unnecessary and medically inappropriate rules by the state only to have them change. Missouri is one of six states to pass a so-called heartbeat abortion bill, banning the procedure as early as the sixth week of pregnancy. Georgia is among the states where TV shows and movies, including Avengers, are filmed. Disney, Netflix, and Warner Media have all issued statements that say they'll reevaluate additional projects in the state if the law is implemented. Tom Hanson, CBS News. If the St. Louis Planned Parenthood loses its license, Missouri will become the first state without an abortion clinic since the Roe v. Wade Supreme Court decision in 1973. Well, new trouble for R&B singer R. Kelly. Prosecutors in Chicago have charged him with 11 new sex-related counts, including some that carry a maximum sentence of 30 years in prison. The charges apparently pertain to a single victim. Kelly is already facing 10 counts of aggravated sexual abuse involving four women years ago, three of whom were minors when the alleged abuse occurred. There's more to come tonight at four. Summer and teenagers behind the wheel can be a deadly situation. We'll find out what some car makers are doing to make their vehicles safer for young drivers. That's when Live at Four continues. You're watching News 3 Now, live at four.
Well, today marks the start of what AAA calls the 100 deadliest days. Over the past five years, nearly 3,500 people have been killed in crashes involving teenage drivers between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Dash cam video shows some of the mistakes that teens make, from texting and driving to dozing off. Trisha Morrow, the mother of a teenage driver and a safety engineer for General Motors, helped design Chevy's teen driver technology, and now it's new feature called buckle to drive the car will not start unless you buckle your seatbelt other car manufacturers have technology that can be used for teens like limiting the speed and the volume of the audio system CNET's Brian Cooley says the technology is a no-brainer for car makers so it's easy for them to offer this at minimal cost and they get a lot of kudos from buyers in the new market and a lot of families will say I want that car versus the one that I perceive as being less safe in testing, Chevy says its buckle-to-drive technology increased seatbelt use 16%, and it's designed to give parents some peace of mind. That's a good idea. A lot of good ideas there. Well, stocks showed signs of some stabilization today. The Dow Industrials gained 43 points, closing at 25,169. The Nasdaq Composite Index added 20. The S&P 500 was up almost 6. Well, it's almost the weekend in the 608. Emmy Fink is here with a look at what's happening around town this weekend. The sun is finally out. It's finally warm. You got it. The festival season is here. Lots going on this weekend. Totally. It just feels like summer finally today. And hopefully it's around for good, not yeah. the 20 degree <laughs> swing tomorrow. And there's free admission at state parks tomorrow or Saturday and Sunday. So get out there and enjoy that. Just watch out for the ticks. I love, oh yeah. yeah. And there's some yeah. great music tomorrow night. There is. So this really should be a great one. The High Noon Saloon, the local alt-rock band Last Crack, they're going to release The Up and Rising, their third full-length studio album. And actually, their first since the early 90s. They took a pretty long break in there. The band recorded it and produced it themselves at Mega Tone Studio in Madison. So a big kudos to them. The show is Friday at 9 o'clock. So cool when you can say you produced it. Yeah. yeah. Did oh, everything definitely. yourself. You know? Yeah. A big Broadway show opens at Overture this weekend. So I actually saw this one in New York a couple years ago. Uh, on the Town is what it's called. In collaboration with Madison Ballet, the wartime musical On the Town hits the Overture's Capitol Theater. It actually goes, starts tonight and goes through Sunday. Lots of performances. It's set in 1944. The musical depicts about three sailors on a 24-hour leave in New York City. So uh, they're going to have some fun. You can get into a lot of trouble and have a lot of fun in New York City if you're there for 24 hours. Especially in a sailor's uniform. <laughs> right. And down the street on campus, something for the arts. Oh, this is so cool. So the Chazen Museum is going to invite people to really get a behind-the-scenes look at the private spaces where artists can create their own work. So the exhibit is called In the Studio. It's curated by the Chazen director, Amy Gilman, and it pulls from all of the, the vast collections that the museum has for where these these artists truly get their inspiration. So it's very cool. It starts this weekend. It runs through July. Oh, that's a great idea. There's mm -hmm. another good excuse to hit the farmer's market this weekend. Oh, you got to love this. It's the annual Cows on the Concourse. If you can't get out to the country, well, guess what? The country is coming to you. It's kicking off June Dairy Month, and it's hosted on the Capitol Square. Kids and adults can meet and greet local dairy cows. You can find all the fun on the 100 block of the Martin Luther King Boulevard going on from 8 until 1 o'clock. That's, of course, Saturday. Are there, is there anything cuter than cows? They're just darling. They are darling. And finally, the festival season I, has been... Were you being facetious? Well, cows Maybe are, a little bit, calves I think. Are, calves are... I don't know if cows are cute. Yeah, cat, Yeah, they're still cute. Okay. They are cute. Festivals. It's around. festival it season, festival. like Susan said, and get ready because we're going to have them for the next several weekends. Come celebrate all things Italian at Festa Italia in Fitchburg at McKee Farms Park. Mainly food, music, and games for the kids. Uh, Friday night does include a pasta dinner and music by Jerry DiMaggio and Eddie Buck. Saturday offers uh, a bocce tournament, cooking demo, and a pasta eating contest, which would be pretty good, be right? Fun. Some good Alfredo sauce or marinara, and then a parade as well, and that's on Sunday. Lots of fun, Friday through Sunday for that one. And a few other festivals going on? Yeah, so just real quick, the Verona Hometown Days oh, is that's this right. weekend, and Deerfield has their Fireman's Festival, and Edgerton has Tobacco Heritage Days. So like I said, we're gonna be listing all the festivals for the next several weekends. Something you for love everyone, it. yep. Get out good and enjoy. Oh, year. definitely. Emmy, thank you. Have thank fun. you guys. Have I a will. good weekend. You too. Get this month's Madison Magazine for all the best in the Madison area.
And there is more at four. Mount Everest has turned into a deadly destination this year. When we come back, we'll find out why and what's being done to try to make it safer for climbers. That's coming up after Dana's forecast. Well, take a look at this. Little Andrew is one tired guy falling asleep in his high chair while eating. His mother, Amelia, tries to remove the tray and take him to his room for nap time. That's when Andrew springs to life. He grabs his mother's arm, shakes his head no. Almost immediately, the one-year-old falls back to sleep. Aww. Amelia goes in for round two, but Andrew wakes up and waves her off again. <laughs> This one goes on for a while until she's finally able to put him down. That's so cute. <laughs> I want the fries, but I'm so tired. So, and he yeah. falls immediately back to sleep. Oh, buddy. No, no, nope, no, nope, no nope. I'm not done. That's cute. Uh, he's Very. so calm about it, too. Just uh, well, he's, go back he's to sleep. sleeping. He's sleeping. He's a little tired good right day, now. Good day for a nap. Oh, Definitely yeah. a good day for a nap. Uh, pretty quiet outside. Tomorrow will be nice and sunny. So get your nap in now. Uh, you'll want to enjoy your Friday. A few puffy clouds, but otherwise, not too bad of a night ahead. A slight chance for some showers and pretty mild temperatures for the next few days. We'll take a closer look at what's ahead right after the break.
it's pretty great outside this evening. Uh, things, if you're stepping out the door, should be just fine. The only minor thing we want to point out on our Doppler track, we do have a few little isolated rain spots. There is a slight chance to see a few rain spots for us right now. So in Iowa and Grant County, we do have a few raindrops falling, but they're very, very small little cells and they're going to move through, bubble up and uh, die down pretty quickly. We aren't looking at a, a great rain chance sliding through for us. In fact, overnight, there are severe weather potential well to the southeast and well to the northwest. Uh, any of these showers do pop up. They aren't really going to bring any storms along with them. For Friday, we're expected to stay fairly quiet through the day, but we are going to watch some storms start to creep into the north and they'll start to move into our area Friday night and for Saturday. So with that slight risk to the north, if your uh, Friday plans do take you north, keep that in mind. We have a cold front just up to the north right now. This entire system is going to keep sliding southeast for us, pushing some showers in by Friday night. And then by Saturday, we're looking at the chance for some showers and thunderstorms throughout the day also. But Friday, again, still looking fantastic for us outside. So throughout the rest of the evening, just like what we're seeing right now, there's that slight chance for a few isolated showers in the southwest corner of the state. Overnight, that chance uh, dies down by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, we'll have a mostly sunny sky. And then later in the evening, those storm chances will stay up north and then push down down to the south for us on Saturday. Unfortunately, we're looking at a pretty spotty day with those showers coming on through. We won't get a lot of sunshine. It's going to be mostly cloudy. It'll be a little cooler too compared to Friday, closer to 70 for our afternoon highs. And then those shower chances stay with us through much of the day and into the evening. We may hear a few rumbles of thunder mixed on in there too. Could be a, a little mixed bag for us. Isolated showers expected for the next few hours. Temperatures will fall overnight with partly cloudy sky to the mid 50s. Uh, by early Friday morning. By Friday afternoon, we're going to watch our temperatures climb to the mid to upper 80s. It's really going to be pleasant outside with that southwest flow and, and a mostly sunny sky. It just allows our temperatures to climb up quite a bit. Overnight clouds build in and our rain chances really start to develop by Saturday morning. And Saturday, we're looking at showers and a few thunderstorms mixed in there also. Uh, so we could be seeing a little rain accumulation coming through for us by Saturday. So far for the month, we are just a little below average. That's thanks to that nice stretch from the 7th through the 14th, a full week of us saying well below average. A few days of 9 to 11 degrees below. Even though the last few days, it's been pretty close to average, if not above as we look at the last week, it's still uh, overall for a monthly departure. We're about two degrees below average for us right now. So today being above and um, tomorrow being quite a bit above might help even things out just a little bit. As far as our precipitation is concerned, of course, we're well above average for the month and uh, for the year still well above average for us about over three and a half inches above where we should be right now. And that's thanks to, of course, the significant rainfall we saw on the 24th, the 25th, and even over a half of an inch back on the 8th. So having just a slight chance for showers and ending on a little bit of a drier note will be a good place for us for the next few days. Probably cloudy tonight. Overall, pretty comfortable outside. That breeze staying light and variable overnight be in the middle 50s to start off the day tomorrow and then for our afternoon highs tomorrow again in the middle 80s. So quite a jump for us in the afternoon. That's thanks to that mostly sunny sky. It'll be very warm outside. A breeze coming from the west southwest about 8 to 15 miles per hour. So it'll be enough that you'll certainly notice it in the afternoon with those temperatures climbing into the mid 80s throughout the afternoon. It really is expected to be a pretty pleasant day for us. So we'll be able to get outside and enjoy it later on. Even in the morning, uh, won't be too bad in the middle 50s. As far as the next 10 days are concerned, we'll be close to 70 for both Saturday and Sunday. That chance for showers and thunderstorms only in our Saturday forecast. We'll be hopping up for Sunday. That'll be good news. We'll have mostly sunny skies for Sunday and for Monday. So no reason to uh, start the first work week of June with any Monday blues. The sun will be nice for that and temperatures will be close to average. And then we're expected much of the rest of next week to be in the upper 70s. So we'll be above average with some sun along with that. And it looks like a little more of a dry trend, even with those thunderstorm chances popping up on Wednesday. Again, several, several dry days in there. Always good news, of course, for our farming friends. And just anybody right now who's kind of over the rain, and I think a lot of people are. That so. looks like a nice stretch this uh, weekend and next weekend. Well, Saturday's yes. raining, right? Saturday's got some rain chances, but Sunday, yes, yeah, Sunday does look nice for us. And next weekend right now, it seems like the system that we're, we're looking at moving close is going to stay off to the west. We'll keep it off towards Minnesota and Iowa right now. Of course, that's 10 days out, so we got a yeah. little bit of time before we need to focus on that track. But uh, two weekends in a row with some sunshine sure would be nice. Good stuff. You know, yes. I'm off next week. Oh. And whenever I'm off, I know. it's good weather.
Miller. Really? Yep. He is uncanny. He always times this. <laughs> it's a wild skill. <laughs> it is. It's an incredible <laughs> skill. It's really true. You've only missed it one time. One I time, yeah. Yeah. When you were on a cruise and it was actually warm it was, here. Yeah, it, it was, was actually warm. It was in, in December. What? It was, it was really. It was like in the 40s, so I missed that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm but, off next week, so it'll be nice, you'll everybody. Be You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> You're, <laughs> fair enough. All thanks, right, Dana. thanks, uh -huh. Dana. Well, this year has been one of the most crowded and deadliest seasons ever for climbers at Mount Everest. The debate is growing, growing over how to police the world's tallest mountain. CBS's Gwen Bumgarner reports from London. Human traffic jams like this one have proved deadly on the path to the world's highest peak. The death toll rose to 11 this week when experienced climber Chris Coolish from Colorado died on his way down. The New York Times reports this year's record death toll is prompting tourism officials in Nepal to consider changing the rules about who is allowed to make the trek. Future climbers may have to prove they have enough experience to reach the summit safely. Climber Martin Hewitt calls Everest a free-for-all. He says inexperienced climbers slowed the line and put everyone's life in danger. Ultimately, there are a number of people attending this mountain that do not have the fitness, the experience, the technical skill, or the credibility. Currently, there's no criteria to climb Everest. Anyone can get a permit if they pay the $11,000 fee. This year, Nepal issued nearly 400 permits, more than any other year. This week marks the anniversary of the first Everest summit by Edmund Hillary in 1953. His daughter Sarah says climbers need to set their sights on a new mountain. There's so many amazing peaks in Nepal and they're all very challenging. I think it would be wonderful if people looked to other mountains and weren't so obsessed with Everest. Since Hillary's climb, at least 295 people have died following his path to the top. Gwen Baumgartner, CBS News. And the trek up Mount Everest is 29,000 feet. It takes climbers about two months to complete the climb, and with the permit and equipment, it can cost anywhere between forty to fifty thousand dollars. Two months. And yet, look at all the people that still want to do it. That, I mean, I can see why, but that, that picture of the line—it's incredible. That's going viral now, so hopefully, it'll bring about yeah. some changes. Hopefully. We'll see. Still to come at four, it seems as if CBD oil is being added to everything these days, from dog treats to milkshakes. Now add coffee to the CBD-infused menu. We'll check out the benefits and the drawbacks of hemp oil coffee when Live at Four continues.
is a live look at downtown Platteville from our Queen Bee Skycam. Nice day. Yeah, nice to see the sun, things greening up. Tomorrow, the Food and Drug Administration will hold the first public hearing on a plan to legalize CBD in food and drinks. Barry Peterson went to Denver to check out the buzz about CBD oil infused coffee. I'm gonna do a, uh, a latte. It's usual for people to buy coffee at the Blue Sparrow, but this being Denver, the blend is unusual. It's infused with CBD. Can I get the CBD nitro? John McCaskill used to drink pots of coffee daily but the CBD version eased his coffee craving. The best way I can describe it, it's kind of like taking off and then it just levels out. I had a chance to start a coffee business, but what I'm doing now is, is delivering you know, a better life to a lot of consumers. Andrew Amott is co-founder of Denver's Strava Coffee. This is our roastery. He started as a high-end coffee roaster, but competition forced him to be different, so he added in CBD. We're not selling pot coffee. We are selling a coffee that has been infused uh, with, with nutrients from a plant uh, that do not have a recreational purpose. They don't produce any kind of high or experience like that. It's confusing. Pot comes from the marijuana plant that's loaded with THC, the ingredient that creates a high. But CBD oil comes from the hemp plant, soon legal to grow across the U.S. It has trace amounts of THC, but usually too small to make anyone high. And lately, it seems like CBD is for sale everywhere, claiming to help with everything from soreness to stress. But that depends on how your body reacts. The raw cannabis acid. Says Martha so Montemayor a certified nutritional consultant. Some people are definitely going to feel better. Some people are going to feel nothing. Back at Strava, this may be the closest thing to coffee heaven, the quality control tasting room. It tastes pretty much like normal coffee. It tastes like great coffee. Caffeine is still there. The CBD is going to balance it out just a little bit, help with maybe some, some mental clarity, some focus, and then help with just kind of make things a little looser. Strava's CBD coffee is pricey. One of the cheapest bags sells for around $20. The most expensive, with eight times more CBD, will set you back $54. 95 cents. Barry Peterson, CBS News, New York. $54, that'll wake you up. You had me at coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I love my coffee. You do. <laughs> when we come back, there isn't anything like it on or off the road. Mark will go behind the wheel with Harvey Briggs to check out the Ford F-150 Raptor. The mud didn't have a chance on this one, no, right? Have you didn't. still done your laundry yet? It's a lot of fun. Coming up.
right now we have a few delays along the Beltline as usual, especially on the eastbound side. Fish Hatchery Road also seeing a few delays right now. Uh, but if we look actually at our traffic camera, just switch to take a look at the uh, our DOT camera at the Merrimack Ferry. The ferry is actually closed right now, unfortunately, due to some repair work and some maintenance work. So the ferry again closed. If you were hoping to take it, we're going to see if this guy is probably going to do a UE. Yep. Rejected. I know. It's a bummer. If you were hoping to get to the ferry, it's just not going to be an option. You'll be like that guy, unfortunately, making a, a U turn. His, his truck's okay, but you're about to learn about a really cool truck here in just a little bit. So, yes, the, the Merrimack Ferry closed right now due to repairs and maintenance along the Beltline. We have some strong delays on the eastbound side. A lot of brake lights popping up for us. Speeds down to the teens, actually, as you get closer to Fish Hatchery Road. Westbound also seeing a few delays. Verona, not too bad. 151 and McKee Road slowed down right now in both directions on McKee Road and around Janesville. We are seeing a few slowdowns on 51 and then on 39 and 90 right near 26. We have delays at this time. 26 minutes from Janesville to the Beltline, 16 minutes from Sauk City to Middleton, and 19 minutes from Sun Prairie to downtown. That's a quick look at traffic. All right, thank you, Dana. Harvey, this one is just for you. The great-grandfather of the Porsche 911 is going up for auction this summer, and it may end up being the most valuable Porsche ever sold. The Porsche Type 64 was Ferdinand Porsche's early attempt at a sports car and has its engine in the rear. Auction experts expect the car to sell for between 20 to $25 million. The <laughs> old record for a Porsche sold at auction was $14 million. That was in 2017. He's a little body work. A little <laughs> interior. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> well, the Ford F-150 Raptor is in a class of one. There is nothing else like this huge off-road pickup truck. There are other off-road vehicles, but this is the only one that can go off-road at high speeds. It's also the only production vehicle designed to launch, as in off the ground. Let's check it out as we go behind the wheel with Harvey Briggs and the Ford F-150 in beast mode. <laughs> So, this, what's the point? The, <laughs> the point of the Ford F-150 Raptor is not to do this, which is drive on roads. <clears throat> It's a giant toy. <laughs> so it's, it's not really practical for daily use. No, it's six inches wider than a standard F-150 pickup. So you can barely park this thing in a grocery store parking lot. But for what it is, it's pretty good. Oh, it's spectacular. You know, when you get off road and you start seeing these tires dig in. So let's take this beast off road where it belongs. The Raptor is a giant truck and it's made that way because people take these off-road that's specifically what it's designed for and that's why we're here keep in mind this Raptor comes off the assembly line like this from the Ford Performance Group special shocks that are constantly variable depending on the terrain you're on you've got these giant wheels and tires on here uh, you've got a fully armored underneath with uh, skid plates everywhere so rocks can't hurt the oil pan or any of that You've got a full-size bed here with plenty of tie-downs for all your gear if you need it. And you've got these great Raptor <laughs> graphics. Enough talking. It's time to get this Velocity blue paint a little muddy. These giant tires and 450 horsepower twin turbo six-cylinder engine makes thrashing around in the mud a cinch. So this is sort of like a supercar. Yeah, this is the super truck. And it is right now the only one on the market like it. You can get off-road focused Rams and off-road focused Chevys, but not with this extreme uh, intent. Extreme intent is a good description. This car raced in the Baja 1000 in stock trim. The only thing they did was put safety equipment in it, and it finished fourth in its class. You have 13 inches of suspension travel up front. You've got shock absorbers that are multi-adjustable automatically so that when you launch this thing, because that's what it's designed to do, they actually stiffen up to soften the landing. When you, when you say launch, you mean yes, air. Air. Mark, are you, re are you ready to get air? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> ready or not, it's time to launch. That is not fear on my face, it's, it's anticipation. Once again, in slow-mo, yep, we launched. Mission accomplished. We have the mud to prove it. 
That GoPro didn't oh. stand a chance. I think, I think I was overdressed for that. Segment. Yeah, I told you to wear boots. But. I, I was not money afterwards. I didn't talk about the price because I think you need to say it out loud. Yeah, it's, uh, the Raptor starts at $53,000 for the short cab version of it. The full dual cab that we had, everything on it. $74,995. And worth every cent. <laughs> well, to do that. There's nothing else you can buy like that. So, yeah. So, who's buying that car? It's not for me to tool over to West Town Mall. No, and... it is strictly a fun car for real off road enthusiasts. So, people who live in the desert southwest, they love those trucks. They take them out, they drive them all over, and very adventurous people. You can go. With 100 miles an hour in this thing off-road. Off-road, yeah, and it really is. Like I said, it was designed to race in the Baja 1000. They did run the stock uh, Raptor in the Baja 1000. It did very well. And then they got in it and they drove it 400 miles home afterwards. Wow. It's a, it's a machine. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's Ford Performance does really incredible things with those very high-end machines. So you have that, you have the Ford GT, the Shelby GT350. They're really good at those ultimate performance vehicles. I think the look on your face said it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not in control. Well, that was my goal, to give you just a little <laughs> thrill And we, there, and we should thank the Bruce Company for the mud. Yes. Uh, they uh, were generous enough to let us take a few uh, yards of it home with us after that. <laughs> and next time it's the Mazda 3 hatchback. <laughs> we're, not, we're not launching. Ridesanddrives.com for more information on all this. Thanks, Harvey. Thank you, we'll guys. You Thanks, time. Harvey. We'll be right back with the final check of your forecast. Nothing headed our way right now. No, we have a few isolated showers right now. There's a slight chance for a sprinkle, but the good news, I, I wouldn't recommend grabbing an umbrella because they're moving through so quickly. Looking out our, our WSC TV sky cam, a clear blue sky for us currently. In fact, a lot of the areas seeing some sunshine, not a lot of cloud coverage for us today. That is the good news. But 
as we do look at our Doppler track, there are a few showers popping up for us in Grant and Iowa counties. So not really out the chance for you to feel a few raindrops, but again, no need to cancel your evening plans just for a quick pop-up shower. All right. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. And coming up tomorrow here on Live Before, our canine correspondents have the top animal stories of the week in the News Zone Roundup. And our Michael Bruno will go backstage of Capital City Theater's production of On the Town that we talked about earlier in the weekend segment. That's coming up tomorrow on Live at 4.